Hello! Oh, it's great to be in Longview. Uh, I went to school here, actually. Uh, University of Phoenix, online. So... Uh, it's good to be back. Played softball, obviously. <laughs> Take your time. Uh, I live by a school, and I'm allowed to, and, uh... <laughs> it's weird to live by a school, because I always see kids in the neighborhood walking home from school by themselves. And it's always like the loser kids with no friends. I was getting sentimental, because they used to be me. I always want to go up to them, like, Hey, I'm you from the future! <laughs> go make some friends! This doesn't work out well for us, you know? Just yelling at random kids on the street, drop that stupid stick, you're not a wizard, all right? <laughs> Girls aren't gonna like you. And he's like, those are my crutches. Whatever, loser. <laughs> I just turned 34, which means I love my parents now. That's pretty new. Uh, <laughs> it takes a while. I guess that's what happens as you get older, you relate to them more, you know? Not that 34 is old, I'm not moving to Florida, but... <laughs> it's different. When I was 20, I was like, I'm invincible, I'll party all night. Now I'm in my 30s, I'm like, I can't leave the house, I had too much dairy. You know what I mean? <laughs> Things change. I used to try to fix stuff. I'd be like, oh, my neck hurts. I'll go to the chiropractor. Now I'm like, ah, I just won't look left. That's fine. <laughs> I don't live in London. It's not important. <laughs> I love my parents. I worry about them. My dad just bought a gun for the first time in his life, which is very scary because he's 65, which is when you want to get your first gun, right? That is... 65, that is when the mind is at its sharpest, you know? He's like, I can hit all the targets at once. I'm like, there's one target, you have bad vision. That's not okay. <laughs> he bought the gun and then he told me about it and immediately he was like, don't tell anybody. <laughs> so just keep this between us, I guess. What do you mean, don't tell anybody? Isn't that the point of having guns? You tell everyone you have guns, then they don't come to your house. <laughs> He was like, nah, man, element of surprise. <laughs> Who are your enemies? What? You live in the woods and make honey. I don't think it's that gangster of an operation. You have pet bees. Calm down, Breaking Bad. <laughs> for his birthday recently, I bought him a tracker for his keys. <laughs> yeah, because he's always losing his keys. And he just bought a gun. Do you guys remember where this story was going? It was literally a month before his birthday. I was trying to pick out a gift, and then I heard a story. One day, my dad was going to work. He got into his car, and he couldn't find his keys. <laughs> that he just unlocked his car with. Does that make sense? You guys... Like, literally, he was like, beep, beep, and then he got in the car. And he was like, oh, shoot, where did I put it? So he did the only reasonable thing he could think of. He went back in the house, stole my mom's keys, <laughs> then just drove to work as if nothing had happened. And when he got home, he found his keys on the roof of his car the whole time. And he just bought a gun. You guys don't seem as worried as you should be. I think the element of surprise is going to be when someone breaks into his house and he can't find his gun. He's like, hang on one second, I got a tracker for it. And quiet, it's beeping. All right, it says three meters to the left. What's a meter? Go back to your country, stupid app. Learn the language. <laughs> My dad's been sober for 30 years, which is suspicious. Uh, because I'm 34, so... Sure, that's just a coincidence, right? Yeah. It's definitely an awkward conversation to have. Like, hey, what was your rock bottom? Uh, you. All right, appreciate it. I, I have no idea what I did as a kid, but I imagine he sat me down. He's like, look, if I don't quit drinking, one of us isn't gonna make it. So, <laughs> I'm glad he made the right choice. I would have missed him. Uh, <laughs> I would like to quit drinking
drinking, but I'm worried that if I do, I'll have to get a personality. Seems like so much work. Uh, I'm trying to moderate my drinking for now, and it's not great. I'm just trying to make a decision before a judge makes one for me. You know? So my new life motto is that two drinks is the new midnight. Because when I was growing up, my dad would always be like, nothing good happens after midnight. Right? Sure, we've all heard the lecture, what's the deal with 24-hour ATMs? Yeah, <laughs> comedy skips a generation. But... <laughs> Don't get me wrong, it is great dad advice. If you're withdrawing money from an ATM at one in the morning, it's not going to charity. Like, right? <laughs> Red Cross doesn't have a Dropbox. It's not even yeah, Puerto Rico time. They need it now. That hurricane looked bad. If you're withdrawing money at one in the morning for charity, that's the stripper's name. So, look, no judgment. I bought plenty of textbooks. Okay, those girls need to go to school. But I'm just saying, for me, two drinks is the new midnight. Cause nothing good happens after two drinks for me. I'm a lightweight, I have two drinks, I'm like, I feel so sexy and successful, this is amazing. <laughs> and your drunk logic is like, if I feel this good after two drinks, imagine how I feel after 17. <laughs> but it's never a continuous experience, is it, right? A lot of diminishing returns. You get to three drinks, it's pretty much the same, so it tricks you. You're like, nothing bad has happened. I just gotta keep drinking. It's like, no, you don't unlock new levels. Tone it down, right? <laughs> you get to four drinks, it starts going back down, right? Four drinks, you're like, I should call my ex-girlfriend. Hey, man, she wants to hear from me at one in the morning. And five drinks, you're like, condoms are overrated. You know, and then you get to seven drinks, and you're like, I'm gonna be a comedian. Like, no good decision. That's, thank you. That's, that's an odd thing to applaud at, I guess. Oh, we're glad he knows this was a poor choice. Uh, I went through a breakup recently, but it's okay. I'm about to get her back with these jokes. Uh, <laughs> It was a real surprise breakup. I didn't see it coming at all. I was always trying to keep things spicy in the bedroom. So we always played a game that was her favorite. It's called Sexy Library, which is where I'm not allowed to talk and she reads a book instead. <laughs> not a fun game. I never got to be librarian. Let's switch it up. It's, yeah. We tried sex on the beach, which Sounds exciting, unless you've had sex on a beach. And then you're like, I got sand in places I didn't know had openings. And honestly, I'm not sure if I got these crabs from you or the beach. So, awkward conversation. Spoiler alert, not the beach, all right? Shave it off. <laughs> or trim it, I'm sorry. Do whatever you want, it's fine. I'm not gonna see 90% of your pubic hair after, so. <laughs> Some people are like, oh, ooh, yeah. She was like, I did the math, I like my odds. Uh, <laughs> after we broke up, I was replaced by a dog, which is refreshing to know that the relationship wasn't my fault. She just needed someone to obey her commands. <laughs> Sometimes people don't laugh at that, and I think it's because they don't know her. We were hanging out recently and I was like, I wonder if the dog knows any tricks. I go, hey boy, speak. The dog was like, help me. I was like, oh, I get it. <laughs> I love dogs. I'm tired of fake service dogs though. I want to be very clear, fake service dogs. I'm not making fun of anybody with an actual disability. I'm making fun of people without any actual friends, you know, they just throw a vest on their dog and bring it to every restaurant. I'm lonely. Oh, I wonder why. Did you try making human friends or was it difficult with the rat you keep in your purse? My friend has a service dog, but it's a chihuahua. I was like, I don't think that counts. She's like, no, it helps with my anxiety. I'm like, the dog shakes more than you do. That's weird. I think your service dog needs a service dog, to be honest. 
How does it work? Get two separate Xanax prescriptions or just one of each? One for you, one for me! The wrecked in peanut butter. <laughs> it's a purse dog, and that's fine. You want a dog for your purse? Call it a purse dog. If a dog fits in your purse and its natural predator is the mosquito. <laughs> oh, oh, I think you're keeping it alive more than it's keeping you. If you need something for emotional support that's gonna fit in your purse, get a gun. Right? <laughs> Same thing, you know, dogs don't bite people, people bite people. It's not my fault. These are my service animals, Smith and West. <laughs> Whenever I'm feeling anxious, I just pull them out and start petting them. Really, calm me down. Who's a good boy? <laughs> so, how you guys kiss your dogs? Right. Listen, no judgment. I've got a vape pen. We all need something. But I'm just tired. Every time I get on a plane, it's fucking Noah's Ark. You know, there's 13 emotional support turkeys. A fucking service pig. I saw an emotional support cat. That's gotta be the worst animal. Cats are assholes in general. How does that work? I'm feeling sad. Where's my kitty? Oh, go fuck yourself. I don't want to talk to him. I think the only reason you need an emotional support cat is so it cuts your wrist for you when you're in a crisis. Alright, thank you guys very much. Right?